and share your views and um, ask me a question or stop me if you don't understand anything. Okay, so today we will talk about consumers, you know, um, especially self image congruity theory. We'll see, we'll, I will show you how we use theory in our um, you know, lectures and seminars and the relevance of the theory to the real world. You know, we don't just use theory for the sake of it. We choose a theory which is being used by the marketeers out there, you know, so, and we don't use books to teach. So we look at latest research, we look at articles, we look at journal articles and news, and then we combine the theory and practice together. So we will like look at this self-image community theory critically and why is it used in, in marketing and um, what is the, you know, what is the purpose behind using this theory, how it helps marketers understand consumer values and their attitudes and how it helps them then then to develop the strategies, um, you know, and the brand image and product image for their target market. Uh, so that's what I will do. Um, so to start with, first of all, I'd like to show you this ad. You know, people have this perception that marketing is all about uh, advertising and selling. That's not true. Marketing is not, you can't sell uh, a product to somebody just by advertising or by heavy advertising. Lots of companies make that mistake, small companies and big companies as well. They think if you advertise a product, extreme, you know, extremely at high level on the radio, television, newspapers, everywhere, people will buy your product. But that doesn't work like that, okay? And um, if your product is not right for the, for the target market, they will not buy it. If consumers don't need that product, they will not buy it, yeah? So consumers Consumers, we need to really understand our consumers if we want to, if it's a consumer good, yeah, if it's a consumer product, you really need to understand what your target market use this product for. Do they use it? Why do they use it? Do they need it? Why do they need it? Some companies think you can actually create a market for your product. You can actually create a product and people and advertise it so much that people will buy this product. That's not true as well. There has to be a need and it has to be the right product for the right person. Like we see in this ads, you know, is this the right product for this audience, for this target group? Obviously not, yeah? So that's not the right product. So, we, so consumers buy products for its functional use or for symbolic purposes, yeah? So we need to understand why this product is being bought. Who is buying this product? Are they buying it for its functionality or are they buying it for its symbolic values yeah so th that's what we are going to look at today the meanings behind the purchasing behavior the meanings behind you know choosing a product because sometimes consumer may choose a product you know for its ability to uh, for example a car yeah to take them from home to work yeah from a destination from one destination to another destination but then some consumers may buy a car uh, to show off, you know, um, to impress family and friends, for example, sports car is a status symbol, it's expensive. So some may, some may buy it for other reasons, not just for it, its ability to take them from one destination to another destination. So we don't just buy a product, we buy a functionality, we, we buy symbols, we buy price, we buy comfort, we buy a luxury, yeah? So we buy different things. We're not just buying a car or a mobile phone or a shirt or a makeup product, we are buying meanings behind it. And we need to understand those hidden meanings. That's why marketers try to understand consumer behavior, you know, the attitude behind purchasing the product. So for example, Apple is one of the, um, you know, very iconic brand. And what Apple does is it, understand its consumers needs and wants you know what what do they want what why do they choose apple 
over any other product? What are the reasons behind that? So they work very closely with their target market and they involve their target market in developing new technologies, new features, you know, new offerings of the product. So they really understand the target group. And um, you know, the, the, there was a like um, the target groups wanted minimalistic. Uh, product which is easy to use and you know um to, you know easy to streamline and easy so they prefer ease of use ease of functionality but at the same time a high tech you know mobile phone which can do lots of uh, which has lots of features and can do lots of other you know things they wanted to do online so that's how apple you know can charge high prices but also fulfill its customers needs and wants because they really understand so just by understanding your demographics it's not enough that you know um, oh this is our target market they have a very high buying power so you know they'll be very happy with our product you can just change the color or uh, you know from a phone or uh, you know or, or um, you know offer one extra service and they'll be fine that doesn't always work like that okay so your consumer needs to connect with your product they really need to like it and understand it and it should fulfill their needs and it should be easy to use as well yeah one example i would use is siri we all use siri not we all not, not all but you know most of us do use siri uh, but siri has received lots of criticism uh, recently for not being able to understand accents from different cultures and minority groups yeah so they received loads loads of complaints because people felt that the the, uh, the technology was not inclusive enough yeah so it only recognized certain accents especially in the early days when it was first introduced uh, what they did they made a mistake they they hired um professionals when they were training Siri voices and its ability to listen and hear and understand and communicate, um, they hired professionals like people who worked at radios and televisions who really speak really well. They speak softly, nicely, clearly. They pronounce every word very clearly. So they were not the right people, you know, to, to involve in the early development of Siri. So Siri, Siri got used to of those accents which were clear, spoken properly. Um, normally, like you and I, we talk really fast sometimes, yeah? We don't sometimes pronounce the whole words, word maybe, yeah? So um, so I think that that was a mistake uh, they make, uh, made in early days of uh, that Siri technology and they realized it, but now they are working at it and they're improving uh, their inclusivity. They want more people to be involved, more culture, accents to be included in Siri and Siri should be able to understand those um, you know accents so that's this just this one example of how you know if you don't understand your consumers um, you could lose out on the wider marketplace because if your your technology is only understanding certain accents so you can only sell your product in those areas you know, you know geographically europe or not europe sorry you know english speaking nations who speak english clearly then you will have problems selling that product to other nations and obviously the goal is to be global to be able to understand global consumers global you know serve global con consumers on a global platform so so those are those are the things companies need to take into account and understand the target market yeah are you guys with me do you is it okay are you do you hear me clearly yeah all sounds good Hina. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's that's very good. So that's why I want to hear. So that's why we have self-image congruity theory. Yeah. So that theory focuses on consumers' personality and what consumers are looking for in a product when they buy a product. Yeah, what is it that attracts them towards that product? You know, why should they buy this product or your brand and not other brand? Yeah, sorry. So, so consumers buy an image, like I said, when they buy 
uh, a product, they don't just buy a product, they buy either symbolic uh, meaning, uh, symbolic, um, um, you know, symbolic value of the product or functional value of the product. However, most often we really want to, when we're looking buying a luxury product or expensive product, we are actually um, looking for symbolic meanings because we want to impress our family or friends or we want to um, abide by our social norms. You know, we want to do the right thing. Um, you know, so, so there are lots of, lots of um, uh, factors which actually influence our buying behavior and our choice of that product and self-image community is that your consumer should connect with your product yeah if there's no connection with the product then you know there will there may be an issue because they will not buy the product because they feel they cannot connect with it or it doesn't reflect their true personality or it ha if they have an issue moral issue if the product doesn't represent for example um, in USA uh, there was mothers um, they wanted to buy coat Starbucks because they felt that Starbucks allows Starbucks had a policy that you could bring in guns in the in the cafe and the mothers felt you know very very strongly against it because they thought that's not right you know when my children grow up they will go to Starbucks or I go to Starbucks with my child and I want to feel safe there I don't feel safe so they complained however Starbucks says well, we are sorry but we need to serve all our customers and we cannot withdraw this policy we cannot stop people who have guns to come into stores because in USA if you have a license you can carry gun so we can't stop that um, so the mothers were like that's not right you know we want to do something about it and there has been lots of shootings in the area at the time it's like a few years ago um, so they went online they started a campaign they were talking to their uh, friends and they were in the media and it generated loads of publicity and as a result Starbucks had no choice but to change their policy you know so consumers said you know if they don't change it we're not going to buy this product we're not going to come to your store and we will stop other people from buying your your products as well so if they didn't feel there was enough congruity between their their personality their image of life and social life and their morals they didn't connect with the um, Starbucks policies and their outlook on life um, and they felt that that's not right so they're not going to buy it so there are lots of things which can actually trigger um, liking your product so trigger something inside um, you know consumers which will make them like your product or dislike your product so we have to be really careful when we are developing our communication you know, communication uh, plans, communication um, media, you know, you know, what media we will choose to communicate to our uh, target audience. How are we going to ta target uh, those audience and what words are we going to use to communicate with them are very important as well. So we'll look at all that in, in more detail. Um, so that's just self-image congruity theory, and that's how it's used. Uh, um, you know, so it's basically is about you know consumer self, their self, and the, the connectivity to the brand. If their image uh, has a positive image, if themselves they feel they can perceive the positive image with the brand, they will choose a brand. If they feel that brand doesn't positively connect with them or spoil their public image or you know or, or or they just don't like something about this brand which is offering you know as something which is not in line with their morals or their social image they will not buy that product okay another example is is about um headphones when the headphones were first introduced people did not want to buy the headphones because they felt like uh, you know, they look silly, you know, they used to be bigger as well. So they felt like, you know, I don't want to wear those headphones. And um, then the company quickly realized that 
oh, you know, we need to do something about this because our target audience doesn't like um, this, um, you know, the, the, our product. So if they don't like it, it's useless, worthless, you know, we can't sell it. Um, so they talk to people and then realize people didn't connect with the product. They thought there was no congruity between their image. You know, they don't want to look silly wearing this, you know, a headphone. Uh, so the company, especially Sony, just tried to educate the target audience and said they tried to talk about the features of the of the product you know how convenient it is to listen to your favorite music or you know uh, while you're exercising or sitting on the train or you know or walking um you know so you can listen to your favorite favorite thing or, or, or like a talking book or uh, anything you want to listen to really you don't have to sit at home to listen to something um, I think that actually really made people um, think twice and they thought oh, okay maybe we should you know change their thoughts maybe we should you know give it a go maybe we can you know perhaps um try this and if you like it then that'd be great if we don't then you know hey and so that's how it started they started to feel feel it's okay to wear those headphones it's not silly to wear those headphones so the focus of it's being so big changed and more the consumer started to focus more on its functions convenience you know the, what it offers you know how can they actually use this for their advantage they don't have to sit in the house you know they, when they're going on long train journeys sometimes the board and um, they don't just have to read the book they have other options yeah so they can wear headphones so that's why and but then companies worked harder and harder to improve the headphones design yeah now they're so small you just put in your hair and you know in your ear and you just don't don't have to worry about anything you you can't see them yeah so that's how the so, so consumer have actually forced companies to develop those designs yeah to come up uh, for, with a better design to serve the customers better otherwise they may not buy it yeah so that's why companies keep striving to keep changing the design and style to make it more appealing for the time and audience yeah so one thing i also would like to say here is that when i'm delivering a lecture i don't always read from a slide slides are a reference so I use the slides they're there students can read them at home whenever but when they're in the class you know i want to give them a different experience i want to use examples link it to the real life you know what does brand image means you know what is cognitive thinking how do they you know what how do they evaluate a product what is an attitude yeah um so that those are the things i try to um to talk to students about um so so that's another example of um, self-image and congruity with the brand personality. Um, the one example I like to say, uh, for example, when consumers somebody buy shoes or a dress, you know, they want to see how they will be perceived, you know, by by other people. So consumer has their real image, their real identity, and then they have a social image, yeah, the social identity, which they want to keep as you know very good all the time, as we all do, don't we? We also we all want to have a positive social image. Uh, we don't want to do anything which will you know destroy our image. It's very important to us to have a positive good credibility amongst family and friends and you know um and in society as a whole um and where we work you know amongst our peers etc so um so that's why social you know for example i was trying to give you an example of a product why we will choose a product for example a shoe some people might buy a shoe which 
give the give an impression to their social image but they're active uh, or which give, makes them feel youthful um active you know uh, they're sporty if that's the image they want to portray if all their friends are sporty and you know like those kind of active lifestyle and you know want purchase those kind of brands and products they would buy those brands and products regardless of the fact uh, that whether they are active or not whether they are sporty or not but that's the image they want to portray or they want to be in with the, with the joneses yeah so they will choose that product because it shows that they, they are active and they feel youthful and the image is positive that uh, so that image of their social identity social self which they want to have and the image of a product you know the brand image in the in, in in the social circles they interact with it has a positive connection yeah so they they gel together so that's why they may purchase that product so that's how they evaluate a product positively or negatively okay and um, so obviously brand benefits are you know very important so for each of us like like i told you when we first started the lecture we look at the brand differently some of us may buy elegance some of may uh, some of us may buy a price so even though we're buying the same product buying a car but we are buying comfort elegance design price convenience yeah so we, we are buying different things we're not all buying the same thing but it's a car but car is different to different people and at a different price it comes for you know for elegance you pay a higher price functionality convenience you may just choose a second-hand car it doesn't have to be a brand you know a strong brand and all that so it depends what you are looking for what you're buying in that product and a brand for example i'll give you another example of uh, l'oreal when l'oreal first went to Japan, they their sales were quite low, and they were like, "Why is that? Why are our sales are low? Why um, people are not buying our product? Is it uh, have we not priced it correctly? Are we not communicating the product offerings correctly? Um, you know, is the brand image negative amongst consumers? What what is the reason? Why are they not buying this? You know, um, they, they, so they were very surprised that." that L'Oreal was not successful. It was very successful in Europe and uh, not in Japan. So they did some market research and then they found out actually Japanese people don't like the packaging of the brand and the shop, uh, the design of the shop was really white. Yeah, it used to be like, you know, 15 years ago, 18 years ago. It used to be very white, everything very white. And in Japan, the color white is linked with death or you know when someone dies people were white yeah so they felt that it was too white everything was too white there so they couldn't really find congruity between this brand image the colors it was offering and themselves you know they wanted something brighter happier not something white which reminds them of you know um, if they have to mourn about somebody or somebody died you know uh, so that was not that was the reason and when they learned about it they were like oh dear you know what have we done here so that's why l'oreal introduced more colors in its packaging yeah, to develop this congruity between worldwide, between global consumers, not just focus on some parts. So in Europe, white is seen as very pure and, you know, true and, you know, very good color. I mean, it's, it's the same in other countries, but the association can be different. Yeah, um, so that's where L'Oreal realized they need to do something about their packaging and they change and introduce some colors to it. So that's why now we see even the white is still there, but it also has connections with other colors. Um, so other people feel, you know, a bit vibrant and happy about it. Yeah, so 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 that's, you know, that's how interesting it is. Some Something very small can trigger such negative connection and feelings towards a brand that people don't want to buy it. Yeah, don't want to come to your shop anymore that's like oh my god 
Um, another one is about congruity with the store. So sometimes we may have uh, like a positive or negative image of a store. So some store we may think, oh, we don't want to go and shop there because people think that, you know, buy cheap things um, or that the quality of that store is not very good. Or, you know, people who buy products from that store are not very, are not seen as, um, very you know, popular people or not very, you know, uh, in with the Joneses kind of people. So we want to avoid those people or don't want to be like them. I want to be very popular and I want to be seen as very posh and very, you know, uh, somebody who's, you know, likes good quality or purchase products from a high quality store which is luxurious and all that so so that actually can influence consumer buying behavior and their attitude towards a certain store so stores also try to communicate uh, positive things about the store why should you come into our store buy our product and not buy someone else's product yeah so aldi has um, done this you know very positively they tried to encourage because they're perceived as you know low cost store and like people who are perhaps um, on low income will go and purchase products from from Aldi or maybe their products are not as good quality yeah so so they were like no we actually produce we have our own farms and everything is ethically produced and we purchase lots of products in Europe as well. Um, so our quality is as good as any other uh, store's products, um, but at an affordable price. So you shouldn't use this against us, you know, it's a good thing. And um, so there's this ad, I will play it. Um, let's see if it works. Uh, I wanted to I don't know whether you can see it. No, okay. It's not running this one. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll leave this one. I wanted to show you another one. I thought I would see if this one works, then it's okay. If not, then. Uh, go back. Sorry. Lost. Can you see this, guys? Um, I, can, I can see the Aldi slide. Yeah. You can you still can see the other slide? Yeah. Okay, I'm not on it anymore. <laughs> I need to go back on it just a minute. Uh... Okay, just a minute. Okay, yep, yeah, that's good. That's good. So, okay, so I want to show you this. This is a very good one, actually. This is about John Lewis, is in a store in. Uh, in UK and it's about how they are trying very hard to develop strong congruity with their target audience. And I'll ask you some questions, so please pay attention when you watch it, all right? Okay. So yes, just a minute. So yes, guys, what do you think of this ad? What, what, what are they trying to, what did you notice? Did you notice anything? 
Anybody speak up? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, they might have to put, um, they possibly might be able to unmute themselves, but if not, if you just pop your answers and things in the chat, then we'll be yeah. able to see those. Yeah, try to unmute yourself. I'd like to hear you as well, if you can. That would be really nice. Anybody? I'm gonna pick on one chica. Is it one chica? Who, who is one chica? I can see one chica here. Yeah. Are you guys very quiet? <laughs> <laughs> scared, don't be scared. Yilin, hello, are you there? Hi, uh, how are you? Hi, very good, how are you? <laughs> yeah. I see the ad, but I don't know uh, what uh, John Lewis is ac actually selling at. But I see that it is um, a, a woman's life. So from when she was born and then uh, grow, uh, grew up and then became a mother. That sort of thing. Yeah, okay. That's very good. Well done. That's that's uh, good to hear. And I will explain it to you. I understand you don't know the, you know, the, the stories. Basically, John Lewis is a store. They sell clothes, furniture. Um, they also sell like um, uh, electronic uh, household goods. You know, they will sell like um, they sell laptops, television, uh, fridge, um, um, uh, washing machine. Uh, you know all those things appliances home appliances like um kettle coffee maker uh, do you know what i mean so so they sell all, all those things yeah so one thing good about this ad is everything you saw in this ad from the clothes they were wearing the furniture um you know everything curtains they sell at john lewis so it's a very clever ad in that sense yeah so the, they sell these products. So why do you think they chose a woman in this case? Sorry, you mean, why do I think it is the, the same woman in this case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did they choose this woman, a, a woman, let's say? Okay, I, I maybe uh, she is the technical consumer of their, yeah. their brand. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Well done. Um, well, thank you. Yes, anybody else? Uh, and then I'll come back to you, um, Yilin. Thank you very much. Anybody else like to say something now after you know? Jeannie, is it Jeannie? She's very quiet. How about Tina? Tina, are you there? Oh, hi, I'm there. Hi, <laughs> Tina, hi. So yeah, what do you think about this ad? Oh, uh, maybe I thought uh, it's describe a woman, uh, woman's whole life, and because uh, we could see that in the video that uh, uh, in different age, the women have different demand. So uh, the ad could show show that um, uh, we can buy different things uh, just to um, satisfy our different demand in our different age. Like this? Yes, that's a very good one, actually. <laughs> it's very good. Um, so what they're trying to do is they because they sell products from like for children, for grown-ups, you know, for you know, young people, adults, you know, when you get you know, people who are senior citizens, or all kinds of stuff, yeah. Um, so in this one, they have selected that that, that we, we will serve you from the day you're born till the day you retire, yeah? So we are with you at every step of your life and we are very loyal and we appreciate your loyalty to us as well. We offer you good quality service, yeah? If you look at here, it says, um, let me remove this. It says, um, you know, uh, we always, we never compromise on quality, price and service, yeah? So that's their message to their target audience. And like you say, so at a, you know, our lifelong commitment to you. So from the day you're born and to the day you become this age, when you become a grandparent, we, we are here dedicated to deliver good quality service to you. We'll never let you down. 
yeah so that's what they're trying to do develop that congruity that we understand our consumers and we we are with you at every stage of your life and we know you know what you want and we are able to serve you for kind of you know um message and the reason they chose a woman here she is the center stage because uh, most women make decisions about the household things, you know, for clothes, for food, furniture, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think that's why they chose that because she's the head, you know, she's the main decision maker when it comes to choosing clothes and furniture and, you know, other st stuff for the house. So that's why, but men is also there because, you know, um, men also purchase products out there, but I think they think if it's a household, um, most of the time women will have a say on, you know, what kind of curtains they want and what kind of furniture they want. So yeah, they may make the final call on that. So yeah, so that's, that's good. So thanks for that. So do you guys, what do you think so far about the lecture? Anybody? Are you with me, Tina? What do you think? Yeah, well, I'm here. I'm um, Hina. It just so we had this on till half past, so it's meant to be a half okay. an hour lecture. Oh, I see. Okay. So, uh, sorry, I didn't back. know that. Okay, I'll just show, show you one uh, more slide and then I will let you go. Uh, where's my slide gone? Can you see my slides? Yeah, I can see the uh, strategic brand analysis. Sort of okay, all right. Chart. Yeah. Okay, 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 just a minute, just a minute. Okay, go to my screen and then, can you move my slide to next one or? Uh, I don't think I can because you, you're in control. All uh, right, okay. For if you just press your, your arrows, it should, it should move. Yeah, I'm trying, but it's not going anywhere. Yeah. I'll go to my screen, oh yes. So go. yeah, so that's what we talk about. So that's why brands try to develop a personality. And uh, most of it I have already covered. Okay, guys, so I'll just go through it very quickly. So that's why, you know, brand try to develop this personality. And they think because the personality they're developing that will have a major impact on consumers uh, buying behavior and the way consumer perceive their brand. So they try to go for, you know, what their target market will like. For example, Disney and Amazon, Cadbury, Hallmark, they like to create like sincere image of themselves. Um, Coca-Cola, always exciting. Yes, if you see their ad, they're very upbeat and laughing and giggling. Yeah, um, and Volvo, Google, very competent because that's very important for their functionality. Yeah, so that's where they come from. And Gucci and Rolex, yes, sophistication they emphasize. Yeah, and other, other products like uh, Timberland, Jeep, they like ruggedness, toughness, you know, that's their target audience want to be that as well. And this is the brand prism personality um, that how they develop their personality. They look at personality, culture, self-image, reflection, relationship, and the physique of the brand. So let's say Louis, uh, Levi, sorry, Levi's personality, you know, they try to promote youthfulness and the culture obviously is Americanized, um, trendy is the self-image uh, reflection you know uh, they want to be fashionable uh, without trying too hard you know so uh, sharing adventure and emotions that's the relationship they want to create you know between friends so that's the, that's the message they want to convey to the target uh, audience as well and the physique is like the, the logo is very iconic you know the color of the jeans is blue long lasting clothes etc so that's a um, brand identity Entity for if you look at uh, Starbucks, they want to say quality, quality orientated, and uh, the culture they try to create is commitment and you know good for the environment. Um, self image is ethnicity, ethically responsible. Reflection will be connecting in a place where you meet your friends and family. Um, relationship will be, you know, more, um, I think, like, um, more eco-friendly, you know, more, uh, they want to be more like, um, um, you know, uh, caring for other people and for the environment. Physique, obviously, the, the, there's like wide range of coffee and cozy atmosphere, etc. So I think that, that's, uh, that's enough for today. Uh, there was another ad which I wanted to show you. This is a Banks ad. I'll just show you quickly and then I'll, I'll just go. I 
don't think the sound's coming out here now. Okay. Oh, sorry. Do we need to stop now? No, it's, this is just no sound on the advert. I don't know if it's coming out your end. This is on my head, yeah. Oh. Okay, so you couldn't hear this one at all, was it? Oh no. Okay, so so that was just an example of how even some banks are trying to create a positive image of themselves uh, because they feel, uh, you know, consumers, they need to understand the target consumers. And this was to develop, you know, they're offering a uh, special launch for entrepreneurs and they want to really uh, be, they want to understand the target audience, especially young ones. If the young consumers don't open accounts into their banks, you know, they, they will have no bank, <laughs> you know, so they want to show that, that their, their brand and their bank understand the needs and wants of this this generation they're ambitious you know if they want to borrow money to study or open their business what kind of help is available what kind of you know um, support the bank could provide uh, this target group okay so um, I mean it's been a joy talking to you guys and um, we I will just conclude this um, lecture that you know um, I hope you learned something today and um, the essence of the lecture was that you know the theory does work the theories we choose um, in our lectures are linked with the you know practicality of lives how marketeers use those theories to develop their marketing strategies to understand target markets and um, to develop products which will um, you know uh, create long lasting relationship with their consumers so the aim is not just to sell a product not just to advertise but develop a, you know loyalty and uh, good relationship and have consumers in the long run, not just for the short term as well. So you need to understand the motive behind the purchase, what makes them buy your product, why they buy, what are they buying it, yeah? So understand those hidden meanings behind consumer uh, purchasing behavior and then interpret those meanings and you know uh, translate it into your product and offerings, whether it's a service or a brand or a product um, and then keep making it better uh, to be competitive and to be able to remain uh, relevant in the marketplace okay so thank you for being here and i really hope you enjoyed the lecture so what do you think before you guys go um any comment anybody perfect thank you Hina. yeah if anyone's got any questions you can pop them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself to ask any questions that you might have um, I will pop our email address in the um, chat box as well. So if anyone has got any questions that they want to email over um, about either Lancaster University or any courses or directly uh, to Hino, so we can we can direct any questions after to Hino as well. Um, but yeah, pop some uh, questions in the chat if you have any. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, uh, Vanishka. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Okay, so everybody's quiet. Everybody seems very shy. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, so you, okay, I'll just wait, okay. There we go. So I've popped our um, email address. Um, so I think we have had a, a few questions. So um, okay. there was one that was, who would be the sender and receiver we mentioned here? Okay, so in the brown prism, if you go into the brown prism, the brown prism is design to obviously develop brand personality. So the company developed the brand prism, yeah? So if you look at this slide, um, so personality of the brand, so the company will develop, you know, what kind of 
trained what what, what 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 kind of tone you want to develop what what kind of personality you want your your brand to have obviously you need to understand your target market so if it is young consumers are they professionals are they mothers you know are they single parents or are they mix um, you know single young married um with people with children etc so you also, so that so what kind of personality are you trying to be unique are you trying to be um, like an exciting product are you going to try to show that the youthfulness or a sporty active life active lifestyle so that's what you need to decide what your product is going to be that's the company and the company to decide this before they decide on this they need to know what the target market is what their personality is what kind of personality are they seeking yeah like i said before uh, their personal life and their social life may be different their 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 identities, self-identity as they see it may be different from their social identity. So what kind of identity they're seeking when they're buying a product? So that's the company will design this. Yeah, so these are the, these are the six um, points they use, the culture, the value system. Like I said, when the L'Oreal went to Japan, they didn't understand the culture, the value system, the colors, yeah? They, they didn't understand the white is considered, um, you know, as a, as a sad color, that people wear white when somebody dies. So that's not the, you know, that's, they're just not feeling, feeling the joy when they're buying these, you know, L'Oreal products. So they need to change the, the packaging, they changed it, yeah? So, how your brand help customers reach their ideal selves which is the self-image you know how are they uh, making them feel good or bad about themselves yeah do they feel happy excited you know satisfied etc yeah and then reflection is about the characteristic of your typical customers you know does it reflect your cons consumers personality what are they like what are they behaving the way you know are they trendy are they old fashioned are they are they um you know religious are they not religious you know who are your target market i think that that's what it means and then uh, what kind of relationship you want to de develop between you and your customer and the physique, your logo, how does it communicate with your target market? You know, are they happy with it? Do they understand it? Do they like the shape, the design, the colors? Like I said, uh, L'Oreal changed its colors afterwards because they thought it doesn't talk to the, the character, physical characteristic, did not connect with the, with the target audience. So here, if I look at, show you an example of Levi's, yeah? So but our brand personality is youthfulness. Yeah. And then culture, obviously it's American, individualistic, individualistic culture in general. They, that's what they promote, yeah? The self-image, trendy self-image. Yeah, the reflection is trendsetters, you know, fashionable goods, people who try, you know, try, want to be fashionable, but don't want to be seen as like they're trying really hard. Yeah, sharing advent adventures, you know, relationship with their customers and the brand, the relationship is the image it creates is that, you know, uh, adventurous image, in more, you know, sharing adventure, etc., with your friends. Um, and the logo is iconic logo as you can see it's red color and you know etc yes does that make sense so the company is doing this but the company also need to understand um, their customers when they're developing that's the prism they follow these to develop the the the, the brand image and to develop the strong congruity between their brand and consumers okay, that's brilliant thank you Hina. Uh -huh. Right, I think um, we should probably end it there. Um, and just obviously, this was scheduled for half past, so I don't want anyone to be missing anything else. Um, but thank you so much. Um, oh, this, uh, someone's just popped another question. So, some values of these brands look positive but similar. How would these brands differentiate themselves from their counterparts? How will they do that if others copy that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, they also have uh, copyrights, so you can't just copy them straight away. Um, so if others copy it, 
Um, I think, like I said, if the consumers already have developed a strong relationship, that's why they keep trying to develop a strong relationship with the target audience. Uh, for example, Apple, there's Apple, but then there is uh, Samsung, there's Sony, there's so many other uh, mobile phones, but people are willing to pay higher price to get an Apple phone, you know? So consumer will always will, um, have you know if they have a strong connection if the brand offers uh, the positive image they are looking for new technology and is seen as a leader in the market to provide what customers are looking for then consumer will keep buying it's not that easy you can copy like samsung sometimes offers something um quite similar to apple but it doesn't make apple user switch you know the, the status symbol image of um, Apple is enough, just the name is enough for consumers to be always um, loyal to, to the brand. And if you look at the cars, Mercedes, you know, Toyota and uh, BMW, um, people in the UK says, oh, this is a BMW, typical BMW driver, if they do something, or as a typical Mercedes driver. If it, so their personalities are also linked with their brand, their buying as well. So most of these cars are for similar you know, services and similar technology, maybe you somehow better technology than the others, but uh, it's the name, it's the brand image, the connection consumers have already developed, um, so which is difficult to copy. You know, the, the brand image is always is that's why they want to be unique, they want to be different, even though there are similar brands and similar technologies out there. Um, you know, they, they manage to survive in the market for a long purpose, how they communicate themselves, how they, uh, you know, what they offer different product. Um, like say design and colors and uh, um, other, uh, for example, product uh, uh, features, for example, um, you know, set nav or after service, um, uh, after sales services, or, you know, they're also nowadays offering free insurance uh, for two years if you buy Mercedes, for example. So they, they, they do keep offering lots of different things to keep their consumers hooked and keep coming back for more, basically. But um, so, yeah, so it's not just one thing. It's not just, for example, Starbucks. It's not just the taste of the coffee. It's the environment uh, of the shop. It's, it's their, um, you know, commitment to an uh, eco-friendly coffee. And uh, you know, so lots of things to do. They're, they're very good at uh, corporate um, social responsibility as well. So, so there, there's a lot of things behind a product, behind a brand image, which creates an image. It's not just about, you know, product itself. Yeah, like I said, we don't just buy a brand or we don't just buy a product. We buy convenience, luxury, um, happiness, uh, sadness, not sadness, let's say, happiness, um, taste, yeah, uh, status. So, so that's what we are buying and not just, so that is difficult to copy, that's not, uh, but that's another lecture on that one. So, that's <laughs> um, so quick Luke, I had one more question, but we just need to be really quick now. So um, the sender in this Levi's page is the company and the receiver is the customer, is that right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, they're developing all these. So that's what they have to do in house in their in the company before it goes to the customers. Yeah. So they develop these. So they to develop the brand image, they have to get the personality, culture, image, reflection, relationship, and the physique, the logo right. So if these all these are right and well connected with their target market, then they will have a strong image and a strong relationship with their consumers. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Hina, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you've um, found that really interesting. I definitely have. Um, but yeah, we, we have a good session today, so we will be sending that out to everyone that's joined us. Um, and yeah, thank you again, Hina, and we'll, uh, we'll hopefully see you all soon in another uh, webinar. We've got a few more um, coming up tomorrow in our Masterclass week, so do take a look on our website if you are wanting to join those as well. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank Have a nice you so day. Much. You are. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.